now. Come on, kill something now. Yeah. Welcome back, folks. The Let's Play Baldur's Gate 2, the Enhanced Edition, The Shadows of Arm. And when last we left off, Bodhi was waiting for us at the very end of the maze. It's like that glimmer of hope that she tried to give us that we might be able to escape was all a big lie. But fortunately for us, we spontaneously transformed into the Slayer when combat began, a horrifyingly powerful creature the likes of which neither we nor Bodhi had ever seen before. The Slayer was quickly able to overpower Bodhi and the vampires with her, and she's retreated to go and tell Arenicus of this development. Hooray for us! We managed to win! Unfortunately, the Slayer then decided to turn on the rest of the party, because the Slayer just wants death. And it doesn't matter whose death, it just wants death. It was quickly able to overpower Hexat, and when we rested, we transformed into the Slayer again. We did transform back to normal after being a Slayer for a time, and we nearly managed to kill Corgan. Take that as a note for how powerful the Slayer is. The Slayer has lots of really unique abilities, and one of them is the ability to just shred through armor. We don't want to rest again because we don't want to transform back into that. And while we could just use the Minotaur horns that we have to fix this statue and escape, there's still quite a bit more of this level left to explore. There's this door we haven't been through, and this door that leads to quite a large area. And there's also something that we can open up here that I'm going to do on the way back. Good first things first, let's open this door and see if Edwin's opinion can indeed drop lower. It probably can. I believe there is a single, yep, one Minotaur here. We can easily deal with one Minotaur. And there's also something that we can loot. Goodbye, Minotaur. There's the thing we can loot. And while I'm thinking about it, let us see if we can learn Finger of Death. Yes, we can. Brilliant. What's in here? I think, yep, there are a few more mithril tokens here. A small amount of gold, a scroll of chain lightning, and some magical bullets that we, of course, are going to pass over to Edwin. As well as that scroll, he definitely knows this spell, but it's always a good idea to have another copy of it, just in case we need it on the fly. You can have these, and I'm actually going to give you this shield, because if memory serves, and I think it does, we're going to be encountering a Gorth pretty soon, along with some Minotaurs. The Minotaurs aren't a problem, the Gorth is. Minotaur, Minotaur, there's the Gorth. Right, we'll have you move forward and just uh, deal with that Gorth while we have uh, Terry and Dawn take care of the Minotaurs. And a few more of those rays, yep, and that's the end of the Gorth. And Dawn's gonna take a few hits, but that doesn't matter. Victory is ours, and I don't think we need this equipped anymore, and we don't want that one. We'll have that one. I'm just realizing now how many shields Corgan has. A veritable arsenal of them, each one for a different situation. And I suppose that's how every fighter in D&D is. They have different weapons for different things. This is my cold iron axe, this is my adamantine axe, and this is my axe that I use to kill chaotic evil treants called Earl. It's a very specific magical axe. When I find Earl, Earl will pay. Let's loot this now. There are some more mithril tokens, a tiny amount of gold, magical bolts, and a sunfire scroll. Sunfire is like fireball, an explosive burst of flame which detonates with a low roar and delivers damage proportional to the level of the caster. The wizard gestures with her hand and the entire area around her erupts in flames. Creatures failing their saving throw take full damage from the blast, but those who succeed manage to dodge, fall flat or roll aside, taking half. This is an interesting scroll. I believe it is a, uh, it is a wizard spell, and it's just like a fifth level fireball. Curious. I thought that would be a priest spell, considering it was called Sunfire. But hey, it's not. Now we're going to have you identify these bolts, and we'll pass the bolts over to you. We now have 12 mithril tokens. Yeah. We're going to need a few more before we're done here. I think there are 21 tokens to grab in all, and we want to get all of them. There are some nice goodies for us if we can. Now that we've explored this way, which leads to the way out, we're going to explore the other direction. 
which I believe has some minotaurs and a use for those paintings that we've been picking up. Unfortunately, we don't get to keep them and start our fledgling art collection. They're used to solve a puzzle. And I believe there's going to be a Yonti party nearby. Yep, there are the Yonties! Now we want you to attack here, you to attack here, you to attack here. I want Edwin to use a chain lightning. And I want you two to start slinging those bullets and arrows. Switch over to those arrows. These enemies do not warrant special ammunition. There we go. The chain lightning will do a pretty good job. We could always use another one, though. You do have a second one. This uh, Yonti Mage is not going to last very long against all three of our fighters. And there's more damage. You're pretty much gone. One more good hit. And now we can deal with the rest of them. Shouldn't be too tricky. Not a lot of reward for doing so, apart from the experience. The experience is always nice. Now, let's put you here, and we're going to use Corgan to deal with all four of these. Because that one has a really tricky foe that uh, Corgan is best suited to taking care of. And while we're at it, we might as well have uh, you two close by, because we're going to be using Simulacrum and hasting the Simulacrums, as I always do when we face something quite tricky. And we might as well get uh, everyone hasted if we can. There we go. Everyone's faster. And are you berserk? Yes, you are. Right, don't loot there. Open this up. And I think you need to be the one to open it. There we go. And reveal the Ulitherid. The Ulitherid would be tricky if it was anybody else that was fighting it. Fortunately for us, it's uh, these two. We can pick up that sword. And Dawn has gained a level. Now, this one contains a... That's a spirit troll. Spirit troll really isn't going to be a problem for these two. Are you gone? A few more hits, and you're gone. Magic sword? Let's move on and open up this one, which has a noble djinn. But a noble djinn that is going to try and kill us. And that djinn only used melee attacks, which really wasn't a sensible idea. Finally, this one reveals a corridor and an umberhulk. The umberhulk is not going to be a problem. And while we have... Ooh, here are some wolf wares. I was about to say, while we have the uh, haste and berserk, I was going to go around here and deal with a golem. But we'll take care of these first, and then go into here and take care of this stone golem. Oh, I remember this stone golem. Well, that stone golem is no more. Oh my, that stone golem is no more. Just gone. And you move really quickly. I keep forgetting how quickly you move when you are hasted. There are things that we can look at here, and I believe some of these contain mithril tokens. I'm going to check first to see if any of them contain traps, and it doesn't look like they do, so we'll loot. Here are two mithril tokens, a diamond, a maze scroll, oh my, and some more darts of wounding. And here is a small amount of gold, more mithril tokens, and some generic throwing ammunition. You can't identify them. I always keep checking. You can, though. The diamond goes there. You can have a look at this, and my, can you learn it. This is an 8th level spell. An extra dimensional space is brought into being upon utterance of a maze spell. The subject vanishes into the shifting labyrinth of force planes for a period of time that is totally dependent upon their intelligence. You can see there the amount of time that they are trapped. The lower their intelligence, the longer they're trapped. Note that if the ninth level spell Freedom is cast in the area where a creature is mazed, it will effectively bring her back to this plane, ending the spell prematurely. Note that a mazed creature is not freed through dispel magic. And another random note, Minotaurs are immune to the maze spell. It's quite apt. Now let us look at these magical weapons that we've picked up. And there are two of them, and I believe Edwin should be able to identify them both. This is Malachar plus two. 
This sleek katana radiates magical energy when carried. The Malakar, or Dueling Steel, was used by a less than honourable samurai during duels against other samurai. As if of its own volition, it will swoop down and deflect the slashing attacks of other weapons. It is perfect for the warrior concerned about defence as well as offence. This sword gives you plus two armour class versus slashing weapons, and is a plus two weapon. It's not bad! And then there is the Flame of the North plus two. The title does not refer to the blade itself, but rather to the woman who originally wielded it in the icy hinterlands of Faerun. Her name was Carrera, and she was a veritable firestorm that swept across Arctic trolls and the northern orcish tribes. She was a hated enemy of many a shaman whose magic often floundered against her fury. After a lifetime of raucous battle, it was old age that eventually claimed her. The sword was passed to her granddaughter, an adventurer, who presumably brought it to arm. Not only does this deal plus four extra damage versus chaotic evil enemies, but it also has 10% magic resistance. Were this a plus three blade, I'd be very tempted to use it myself, but it's plus two, so we're not going to. A shame, but what can you do? Gonna put this in here, that in here, and then we're going to level up Dawn. Now if Dawn were a blackguard, we would be gaining an extra fourth level priest spell. As it stands, we're going to gain one additional weapon proficiency slot, loads of saves, Thacker reduction of one, and three extra hit points. Now, we have longbow, we have crossbow, we have two-handed sword, and we have two-handed weapon style. Hmm, what else do I want to give you? You know, I could give you halberd. Why not? Just in case we find a really magical halberd, you'll be able to use it as good as any other thing, and it also means that when you gain another proficiency point, Terry and Dawn are not fighting over the same kind of weapons. Why not? It's as good as anything else. Yes. Now, we have a room there we can go to, but I actually want to go this way first, and have a look over here. Ah. I remember this room. I remember this room very well. I'm going to actually risk resting because there is a trap there. You can tell there's a trap because there are a bunch of golems. I believe they are clay golems. And there's also some treasure. We want that treasure. Let's rest. This yes. time nothing happened, and I was expecting something to happen. Hmm. Curious. Ah, well, I'm not going to complain. What we want to do is we want to move Corgan over here and Edwin. Nobody else is going to be in this room. We want you to switch over to your uh, hammer. We want the simulacrum. And we want both of you to be hasted and berserk, because we're going to anger all of those golems. Go bother someone else. I'm afraid you're the one that casts, uh, haste, so I have to bother you. There we go. Good luck, you two. We're going to uh, go into here. We're going to look into here. It is actually locked. That's a little unfortunate. Going to have to quickly get you over to here and unlock this. There we go. Good luck. Now, you're going to open it. There are three items in here. A Star Sapphire, which we can take freely. Mithril Tokens, which we can take freely. And a Short Bow String. Upon taking that, the door closes. All three of these golems go aggressive. But with both of these uh, people in here, both Corgans, we shouldn't have a problem dealing with these golems. If everyone was in here, I imagine at least one person would have been killed. But the Corgans shouldn't have a problem, and we are done. How many tokens do we have? We have the maximum number, 21. Brilliant. As for this, this is the Gessen Bowstring. You may remember that we have the other part of the Gessen Bow. I really want this item. 
This is one part of the Gessen Bow, a powerful shortbow created by Gessen Khan, and used on its own creator when it was stolen by the Shadow Thieves. Legend relates that the bow fires bolts of lightning instead of arrows, and it has been highly sought in the past by Shadow Thieves for use by their assassins and by cowled wizards for study. This is going into the bag because we want to keep a hold of this. Finally, there is this room here, and I believe there are no enemies in here that we need to worry about. And this is when there are enemies. Nope, no enemies at all. This is where we're going to be using our mithril tokens. I'm going to save before I do, because there are quite a few options, and you can pick terrible ones if you're not careful. Alright, Terry, let's look at this. This bizarre contraption has a small slot set in a beautifully engraved panel. A message is written on an old board which has been carelessly tucked into a crack in the machine. The message reads, Master, thy boots are well recombobulated. I have distinctified the souls. Twas a rapturous experience to lend mine hand to the task. Thou art, sir, a man of distinguished valour. The flattery goes on for some time. The system of tokenage has been set to thy precise specifications. The machine will dispense quality footwear upon the placement of mithril tokens within the slot. Surreptitiously, Groffinet, thy jester. The machine can be activated by placing any appropriate number of tokens within the slot. You must have enough tokens to use it. What do you wish to do? Now there's an item for 5, 10, 15, and 20. The 20 item is not worth getting for our party. It is a very magical suit of chainmail armour. We have better armour than that. The 15 token item is very valuable, but if you take the 15 token item, you can't take the 10 token item. You can have two 10 tokens, or four 5 tokens. Or one and one, which I'm going to do. First, we will get the 15 token item. With a quiet ping, the machine dispenses a pair of boots. And finally, we're going to use it again. Because we have more tokens. Enough for the five token pair of boots. And with a quiet ping, the machine dispenses a pair of boots. What boots are these? Now, who's holding on to them? You're holding on to them! One of these boots may be recognisable considering the fact that we're already wearing them. We have another set of the Paws of the Cheetah. As for these boots, we have the Boots of the North, the Frost's Embrace. Stranded by his company for a sack of gold, Devoil the Frozen was left for dead in the midst of the Great Glacier. His dying curse echoed across the barren wastelands to the ears of Aural, Goddess of Winter. She smiled upon him, and his bare body was protected and preserved by his newly enchanted Boots of the North. With them, he crossed the Iceland in pursuit of his would-be murderers. Driven by rage, Devoil took his revenge upon his previous friends as they warmed themselves in a tavern of the closest city. After his thirst for blood was quenched, he continued to travel the frozen land, never to be seen again. These boots confer 50% cold resistance, which is quite nice. As for these boots, I think there's only one person that should be using these, and that is Corgan. Because if there's anything we need, it is a hasted Terry and two hasted Corgans in combat. Truly, this is going to be monstrous. I want you to have these boots, and I want you to have these boots. This gives you another icon, and you another icon. And that means that we have cleared this dungeon completely. Let's go over to here, and use those Minotaur horns. I think we have every treasure that we could possibly need, and look at how fast Corgan is moving, just whizzing along there. And you'll note that since I've given uh, Corgan the uh, boots, this other Corgan is also extremely fast. I don't know if the uh, equipment swapping occurs in real time with the simulacrum. It shouldn't, because the simulacrum should be able to switch out its own equipment. But you can't access the simulacrum's inventory, so that really doesn't work as a mechanic in this game. Let us fix this statue. It's done, and we gained 
29,500 experience for each member of the party, which is not bad. And when we come back, folks, we're out of here! And we'll be going back to Brynlaw and trying to find Saemon, because trust me, we're not happy with Saemon at all. The whole betrayal thing has kind of annoyed Terry, as you can understand. And so, I'll catch you next time, folks, and I'll see you then. Later. We also didn't transform into the Slayer. I'm a little concerned about that. When is it going to happen again? Hopefully not when we're in the middle of a tavern. That would be awkward. Very awkward. Later.